Mastering Catastrophic Risk How Companies Are Coping With Disruption Howard Conreuter, Michael Osim Oxford University Press, 2018 Many useful tips to understand how catastrophic events such as earthquakes or terrorist attacks can put a company in crisis. Understand what strategies and approaches companies can adopt to predict and when required to manage these problems. Hear the direct experiences of large companies that have faced catastrophic crises and discover how their experiences can help other companies. The author, Howard Kunreuter is a professor of decision sciences at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania and co-director of the Wharton Risk Management and Decision Process Center. For years, he has managed low-probability, high-impact events related to technological problems and natural disasters. His books include The Ostrich Paradox, Insurance and Behavioral Economics, and Leadership Dispatches. Michael Usim is a professor of management director of the Center for Leadership and Change Management and faculty director for the McNulty Leadership Program at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. His courses include Masters in Leadership and Change, Governance and Decision Making. His books include The Leadership Moment, Investor Capitalism and The Leader's Checklist. The catastrophic events represented in the acronym DISRUPT In recent years, more and more companies have had to deal with catastrophic events and consequently they are changing their approach to the risk of business interruptions. There are six main factors that have brought risk management to the fore. These factors are often summarized by the acronym DISRUPT. Drivers. Interdependencies. A denser network of interdependence between companies and services of which an interruption risks affecting the entire supply chain. Short-term focus. The reduction of the timing of business cycles, which leads to a mindset that is more focused on the present. Regulatory compliance. State risk prevention laws become increasingly specific and comprehensive. Urban concentration. Urbanization goes hand in hand with the growth of some companies, and this increases the risks associated with their activities. Greater probability of shocks. What appear to be minor risks tend to accumulate in the long run. Pressure for transparency. Companies are increasingly subject to scrutiny by the media and the public, and therefore, interruptions also tend to play an increasingly important role in their public image. Responsibility for a company's readiness often falls on CEOs and managers, who are increasingly required to deal with risk planning and management. If your organization has not yet faced a serious disruption or crisis, the question to ask is not whether it will happen, but when. Catastrophes such as the terrorist attacks of 2001, Hurricane Katrina of 2005, the financial crisis of 2008 to 2009, and the earthquake in Japan of 2011, have led many companies to work more on predicting catastrophic risks and to build more robust risk management programs ready to be implemented in case of need. Companies must be ready to imagine the unimaginable, plan response strategies, and prepare to face the worst. Entrepreneurial Decisions to Manage Interruptions Effectively Managerial decisions are often made following intuitive thinking, characterized by different biases, that is, prejudices, that lead to not handling a situation objectively. Among these, for example, there is the availability bias, or the tendency to make risk calculations using only the information available, thus omitting eventualities that have never occurred to the assessor personally or in their company. Therefore, when it comes to the assessment of unlikely but highly damaging catastrophic events, it is very common to underestimate the impact of those that have never occurred in the past and to focus too much on events that have already happened. Another bias that negatively affects managerial decisions is the status quo bias or the tendency to try to maintain a situation that seems stable. All these arguments are part of an intuitive thought which tends to be very personal and therefore does not fully analyze a situation. A deliberative approach, on the other hand, places greater attention on a systematic analysis, as well as more complex decision protocols, both essential factors to guarantee the readiness of a company to face catastrophic scenarios. Although the cost of designing and implementing these strategies are high, a positive aspect is that more executives are now ready to adopt a deliberative approach having a greater awareness of the bias that can lead them to make badly informed decisions. 
in addition to a greater openness to learn from the experiences of other companies which have faced similar situations. The risk appetite of a company represents the type and quantity of risks it is willing to take to achieve its objectives. It is opposed to risk tolerance, meaning the maximum loss that it is willing to accept against a given risk. Many companies have developed a deliberative risk analysis cycle. By learning from past experience, the company identifies and assesses the dangers it could face, after which it establishes appetite and risk tolerance, the foundations on which to build its risk management strategies. A large risk appetite requires greater tolerance for interruptions. Finding the right balance between the two measures has become an essential part of company resolutions and may explain the growing importance that the role of the chief risk officer has assumed in many companies. Risk management and crisis response strategies, combined with the company's culture, are the main ingredients of the deliberative approach adopted by many large companies. Many risk management strategies have emerged following large-scale disruptions faced by various companies since the 2000s, including the 2001 attacks and the 2008-2009 crisis. Companies are also learning from their experiences, even in cases where disasters have been avoided by a whisker. Companies are struggling to prepare and manage adverse events, disruptions and crises, more comprehensively in the area of corporate risk management and business continuity planning. Some practical tools used when preparing are risk models, systematic risk reduction, improved communications, strengthening of suppliers, creation of a network of contacts between competitors, promotion of production continuity, anticipation of future interruptions. What companies affected by a crisis do? When a crisis strikes a company, if CEOs and executives and managers have already implemented a risk management culture that allows them to respond promptly, and in a targeted manner, companies will be ready to face and overcome these interruptions. Personal knowledge and mutual trust between a company's crisis teams and its managers are an excellent starting point for rapid mobilization in the event of a crisis. Some fundamental elements for the recovery of a company are an organized and prepared management, the readiness to promptly initiate response actions, and a good series of risk indicators. In addition, real-time availability of data relating to potential risk situations is required. Company boards are increasingly involved in strategies and executives often take deliberative roles, driving strategies, helping to define appetite and risk tolerance. Finding CEOs with previous experience in risk management can strengthen the entire board. They are responsible for identifying the dangers in company operations that can lead to disruptions or disastrous consequences, if not detected and mitigated. Keeping CEOs informed of business operations can help them prioritize risk management strategies and make them an integral part of board resolutions. A well-informed executive can help identify risk factors in new business operations and decide the cases in which a more detailed risk study should be performed. It is important that managers are able to clearly distinguish between the risks they must be directly concerned with and those that should instead be entrusted to other corporate bodies. Catastrophic risks deserve the attention of all executives, not just specialists or a dedicated commission. Donations following disasters, whether for relief or victim support, are increasingly becoming an integral part of corporate strategies. This is a very important aspect, given the scale of some catastrophes which would otherwise be borne by governments, humanitarian organizations and communities. It should also be considered that, if areas where the company operates directly are affected, it is also in the company's interest to give strong support to the community in order to mitigate the negative effects on its own operations. Moreover, compared to traditional channels, aid from companies tends to be faster because their bureaucratic passages are fewer. It can be much more targeted, going to help those who need it most. In addition to implementing strategies to deal with the catastrophes that directly affect them, more and more companies are developing support plans for geographic areas or companies that are going through difficult times. How companies are changing the way they approach risk A further fundamental aspect that is characterizing this approach to risk is a new level of transparency with regards to risks. Companies are increasingly publicly discussing the risks they face. All this new information is useful for all companies in a given sector who find themselves able to benefit from this shared knowledge, drawing lessons from those who have already faced certain situations. 
In recent years, rating agencies have also started to include in their reports a real assessment of a company's ability to organize itself in risk management, analyzing its emergency plans and mitigation strategies, rewarding companies that demonstrate a great readiness, penalizing instead those who do not give enough importance to this aspect. National governments are often among the various factors that companies perceive as possible sources of risk. From tax laws to workplace safety laws, the relationship between the company and the state is often difficult, and new laws approved by a government agency can create serious problems for a company. Failure to comply with these laws not only leads to fines and measures that risk damaging an activity economically, but can also damage their image from which it is often much more difficult to recover and which risks persecuting a company for many years to come. On the other hand, the government has a fundamental role in mitigating some issues that companies could not face alone. For example, think about laws that are created to prevent economic and financial collapse rather than interventions in areas affected by natural disasters. Risk is a fundamental part of the investment sector and companies are increasingly sharing information about their risks and the strategies related to them with investors and shareholders. Given the spread of a deliberative approach to this type of problem, investors and shareholders are becoming increasingly demanding with their directors and managers to the point of requiring the resignation of those who demonstrate that they are not prepared. So, how can a company be sure to follow the necessary steps to be ready in the event of a catastrophic event? The first step is not to delude yourself that it cannot happen to you. Imagine five catastrophes that could affect the company in the near future. Involve all levels of the company organization chart and outline response and management programs. Recognize the biases that influence our strategies and forecasts and try to reformulate them in the light of new information. Identify tangible risks that our business faces and prioritize those that require immediate action. Use the feedback provided by CEOs and managers to understand which events would risk impacting the entire company. Define appetite and risk tolerance at the company level and immediately invest in measures to protect ourselves from possible interruptions. Learn from past negative experiences, not only that happened to us firsthand, but also from those experienced by other companies in the sector. Plan recovery strategies so as to be ready to get back on our feet even in the worst-case scenario. Use risk transfer techniques, such as insurance and other forms of protection against catastrophic events. Be committed to attracting and training the directors of the future who should have a clear vision of what risk management means today so as to be ready to face a future in which it will be an increasingly important element of business management. In a world where catastrophic risks have an ever greater impact on companies, the only way to survive a similar event is not to be caught off guard. Quotes Take calculated risks. That is quite different from being rash. George Patton, U.S. Army General The fishermen know that the sea is dangerous and the storm terrible, but they have never found these dangers sufficient reason for remaining ashore. Vincent van Gogh Crisis management has to be proactive, not reactive, anonymous, Director of a chemical company. Take home message. Companies are increasingly faced with risks that go far beyond normal business risks. Catastrophic events can bring a company to its knees without any warning. It is therefore essential for businesses to carry out risk assessments and to outline response programs ready to be implemented 